Hello friends, welcome to this fourth video on principle of mathematical induction. We have been seeing mathematical induction can be used to prove problem statements in max that involves integers as its expressions. We are now prove quantities which will be not taking equality but rather inequalities as an expression in this particular video. The principle of mathematical states that proof p of 1 is going to be true in your step 1 which is going to be the basic step. Assume p of k is going to be true for n equal to k which is your second step called as the assumption step and the induction step we prove that p k plus 1 is going to be true. In general if the quantity is true for p k plus 1 then the problem statement remains true for all the values of n which is greater than or equal to 1 where n belongs to the set of natural numbers. The problems we have seen till now in the last three videos had equalities that is a statement over here equal to a expression over here. So we proved for equality of the quantity in the last three videos. This video is particularly dedicated for a inequality type of statements where we can prove those inequalities also using the principle of mathematical induction. We will quickly move on to solve problems of inequalities. Problem number 1. Use mathematical induction to show that 1 by root over 1, 1 by root over 2, up to 1 by root over 3 and root over n is greater than square root of n for n greater than or equal to 2. There are going to be two things which has to be clearly observed in this question where the first quantity is the greater than sign which we have over here. Normally we prove LHS equal to RHS but it is not equality over here but it is going to be inequality which we are going to prove here for. The second thing which we are going to observe is Usually, our counting principle starts with 1, but over here in this problem, they have specified that the counting principle will work for n greater than or equal to 2, in which case, the basic step which we have over here doesn't begin with p of 1, but rather begins with the quantity which we have been given for, so n is equal to 2. Therefore, we begin with the basic step being proving p of 2 is going to be true. So what happens when I have p of 2? We have 1 divided by this is going to be square root of 2. Hence I need to start with 1 by root over 1 and I need to go till 1 by root over 2. Therefore I will be adding 2 steps in my left hand side. And I need to show that this part has to be greater than square root of 2 because I have now initialized my basic step for n is equal to 2. Now let us use our calculator to estimate the values of 1 by root over 1 which is 1 and 1 by root over 2 which is going to be 0 0.707. Hence we have this to be 1.707 and we can use the calculator to estimate the value of square root of 2 to be 1.414. We notice that obviously when we compare 1.707 with 1.414 naturally the value on your left hand side is greater than the quantity on your right hand, left, right hand side. So my LHS is greater than RHS and so the statement P of 2 is going to remain true. Therefore I have proved that the basic step is going to be true. What is going to be my next step? It is going to be my assumption step. What do we do in our assumption step? In our assumption we assume that p of k is true for n equal to k. When I replace this n with k, I will have 1 divided by root 1, 1 divided by root 2, 
and so on 1 divided by square root of k is going to be greater than square root of k. This is what we assume in our step number 2. In my step number 3 which is going to be my induction step for the case k plus 1 I am, will be using use of this assumption step for my quantity p of n equal to k. Next stage comes the induction step or the iterative step where we replace this k with k plus 1 and prove that p of k plus 1 is going to be true. What happens in our prior cases? I will begin with 1 by root 1, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 3 and so on. I will go up to 1 by root k which is my last state and the next consecutive number will be got by replacing k with k plus 1. So the next step will be root k plus 1. I need to show that this entire quantity on the left hand side has to be greater than root over k plus 1. This is my end target. So can we begin proving it? From our previous stage until the value of k we know that the quantity is greater than k. So from my expression I know that the quantity till here is going to be greater than k root k and now I have one more term which has been added over here which is given by plus 1 divided by root k plus 1. Now let me take LCM for my term number 1 and my term number 2 in which case the LCM will be root over k plus 1. So this root k is now multiplied with root k plus 1 as your LCM and still we have a 1 for the second factor. Now considering the concept that k will always be going to be compared with your k plus 1, your k plus 1 always remains to be greater. That is we know that our k plus 1 is always greater than k. We can compare it. We know that we have 4 which is always greater than 3 number less 1 less than it. We have to take square root of the quantity and hence we know that root k plus 1 still remains to be greater than root k. This is going to be root over 4 and root over 3. On comparing using your calculator we know that root 4 is obviously greater than root 3. Why do we have to consider this concept over here? Because in my next step I am going to replace this k plus 1 which is present over here by the factor root k. So if I am going to root, replace this k plus 1 by root k what happens over here is the quantity becomes greater than. So root k plus 1 will now be written as greater than root k plus 1 divided by root k plus 1. Now I know that whenever I have a square root of two quantities multiplied that is going to be the quantity itself. Root 2 into root 2 will be 2. Root 3 into root 3 will be equal to 3. And so root k into root k will be equal to k. So my numerator has k plus 1 divided by root over k plus 1. Next, I can replace and write this root k plus, k plus 1 as root over k plus 1 into root over k plus 1 as we saw in the last stage. How I can write 3 as root 3 into root 3. Similarly, k plus 1 can be written as root over k plus 1 into root over k plus 1 divided by there is a root over k plus 1 over here in the denominator. Now, one of these root k plus 1 can be cancelled off and so the final answer will be root over k plus 1. Notice we have introduced an inequality sign over here that gets carry forwarded to the last step replacing this equality. Hence what we have finally is that the entire quantity of 
root over 1 divided by root 1, 1 divided by root 2 up to 1 divided by root k plus 1 is going to be greater than your root k plus 1 and that's what we wanted to prove. Hence, we have proved that the statement is going to be true for your p of k plus 1. Therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, the statement p of n is going to be true for all the values of n which is greater than or equal to 2. Notice we have written 2 because for the question on this problem, we started the basic iteration with n is equal to 2. Therefore, we have proved that 1 by root 1, 1 by root 2 up to 1 by root 10 is going to be always greater than square root of n for all the numbers n greater than 2 by the principle of mathematical induction. Next, we will move on with one more problem on inequality which says that prove that n factorial is greater than or equal to 2 power n minus 1 for all n greater than or equal to 1 by the principle of mathematical induction. Once again, we notice that we don't have an inequality to prove but rather an inequality that comes into play. So this can also be applied for the same rules of principle of mathematical induction and then got for the solutions. Now let us check how to proceed with this problem on the principle of mathematical induction. Step 1 which is going to be my basic step is to prove p of 1 is going to be true. Now I replace n is equal to 1 in the above quantity. So that makes it as 1 factorial. First we need to know the definition of n factorial. This is nothing but product of consecutive integers, positive integers from 1 till your n. Which means if I give 5 factorial then the quantity is nothing but 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. Now the funda over here is I can replace this 5 factorial in terms of my last factorial value. How can I do that? I know 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 is nothing but my 4 factorial. So I can replace this 5 factorial and write it as 4 factorial times of 5. In a similar fashion, n factorial can be rewritten as n minus 1 factorial times of n. Now this concept is what we will be making use of in our iterative process. Now coming to our basic step where we have n is equal to 1, this is going to be equal to greater than or equal to 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 makes it as 0. So it is 2 to the power of 0. Anything power 0 makes it as 1 and 1 factorial is going to be equal to 1. So I have 1 to be greater than or equal to 1. Equality holds true. Therefore, we say that P of 1 is going to be true. I have proved the basic step of the principle of mathematical induction to be true. What is our second step? The assumption step. What do we do in our assumption step? We assume that P of k is going to be true. If I assume P of k is true, I replace n with the quantity k and I make use of the concept k factorial is going to be greater than or equal to 2 to the power of k minus 1 for my n which is greater than or equal to 1. So over here it will be k which is greater than or equal to 1. This is going to be a concept or the fact which I am going to make use of in my next step which is called as the induction step. My step 3 which is going to be my induction step. What do we do over here in our induction? We prove that P of k plus 1 is going to be true. That is when I replace k with k plus 1 the statement remains true. What will be P of k plus 1? So I have k plus 1 factorial 
I will have to prove that this k plus 1 factorial has to be greater than or equal to 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1. So 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1 makes it as 2 to the power of k. So I need to show that finally the expression k plus 1 factorial is greater than or equal to 2 power k. That is going to be my end point. Now let us start. What do we know about k plus 1 factorial? As we said earlier, this k plus 1 factorial can be rewritten in terms of my prior stage as so this k plus 1 factorial will be last number into the content. So it will be k factorial into k plus 1 by the example which we saw. So this is going to be true for all n which is going to be an integer which is a positive integer in particular. n factorial is n minus 1 times of n. So what will be n plus 1? It is n into n plus 1. What do we know about this k factorial from our last step? Our k factorial is going to be greater than or equal to 2 to the power of k minus 1 from our last step. And now furthermore we have this k plus 1 to be added over here. And I know that k is greater than or equal to 1. Let me give the basic value of k as 1 over here. If I give k to be equal to 1 for my quantity which is present over here what will happen is this quantity obviously when it gets incremented for 1, 2, 3 and so on will be greater than or equal to 2 power k minus 1 times of 2. How do we get this 2 from over here? I know this k plus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 2 because my in iteration begins with 1. So 1 plus 1 will be 2 which is always greater than or equal to 2, 3, 4 and so on. You can very well ask, I am replacing this k as 1 over here, why not over here? If we replace it over here, then we will be left out again with an 2 but we want a 2 power k. So just iterate the inequality alone. So we know that k plus 1 will obviously be greater than or equal to 2. So this inequality helps us to move further in proving the concept. Therefore, when we combine the next stage, we have this to be equal to 2 power k minus 1 and this has a plus 1 as its power. So 2 minus k, 2 power k minus 1 plus 1. Hence, this makes it as 2 power k. Therefore, combining the first stage with the last stage, k plus 1 factorial with 2 power k and that is going to be a greater than or equal to inequality over here which gets carried forward in the next stages leading us to k plus 1 the factorial is going to be greater than or equal to 2 power k. Hence, we have proved the required quantity for k plus 1. Therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, the statement p of n is going to remain true for all the values of n which is greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, we conclude that the statement n factorial is greater than or equal to 2 power n minus 1 will always be true for n greater than or equal to 1. I hope these two problems on inequality helps you to understand how one step can be considered to be greater than that of the next step for our simplification purpose which may lead us to the right answer. Happy learning. Keep learning.